Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number four of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, you did the frequency distribution of a discrete variable, the line chart, the relative frequency distribution, and the percentage frequency distribution. Also, at the end of the lecture, we talked about the cumulative frequency distribution of a discrete variable. In today's lecture, I will discuss with you the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. And we will be discussing the graphical representation of the continuous frequency distribution by way of three different graphs, the histogram, the frequency polygon, and the frequency curve. Students, you will recall that in lecture number one, I explained to you that the continuous variable takes values over a continuous interval. For example, a normal Pakistani adult male's height could be anywhere between 5.25 feet and six and a half feet. Hence, in such a situation, the method of constructing the frequency distribution is somewhat different from the method that we did last time. Let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose that the Environmental Protection Agency of a developed country performs extensive tests on all new car models in order to determine their mileage rating. And suppose that we obtain the following 30 measurements by conducting such tests on one particular car model. So, ye hamare figures are gay. Ye Environmental Protection Agency ko hum EPA se denote kar rahe hain. Aur 36.3, 30.1, 40.5, ye EPA ki mileage ratings hain. Un 30 cars ke liye jin ko unhone examine kiya hai. So, ab dekhte hain ke is qisam ke data ki situation mein, jo ke ek continuous variable ka data hai, hum kis tarah se proceed karenge. The first step is to determine the largest and the smallest value in the data set. In our example, the smallest value is 30.1 and we will denote it by x naught. The largest value is 44.9. The, it's the maximum value and so we denote it by xm. The next step is to find the range of our data set. Ab range se kya murade? It's extremely simple. Range is defined as the difference between the maximum value and the smallest value. So as you can see on the screen, the range in this example is xm minus x0, that is 44.9 minus 30.1. In other words, the range is equal to 14.8. As you can now see on the screen, if we plot the x values along the x-axis, which is also known as the real line, then our value, our smallest value, 30.1, is to the left side, and the largest value, 44.9, is to the right. And the distance between the two is 14.8. Lehaza range ka concept, geometrically speaking, ek distance ka concept hai. Ke hamara jo pura jo data hai, wo yani kaha se kaha tak range karta hai. Uski jo maximum uh, width hai, geometrically, us data ki jo width hai, uska jo spread hai, wo kaha se kaha tak hai. The next step is to decide on the number of classes that you want to have in your frequency distribution. Ab classes se kya murad hai? Classes se matlab hai ki wo jo complete range thi, usko hum divide karna chaate hain chote chote intervals mein. These small intervals, the sub intervals of that big interval, they are called classes. Students, there are no hard and fast rules for, for, for the determination of classes exactly how many classes you want to have. It is uh, somewhat subjective. 
it also somewhat depends on the size of your data set. Agar aapki bohat zyada values, thousands mein values agar nahi hai, if it is a small data set having 50, 100, 30, 70 observations, uh, you would generally have 5, 6, 8, 10, 12 classes. So in this example, let us suppose that we decide to form 5 classes. यानी वो जो हमारी बिग रेंज जो है उसको हम पांच इंटरवल्स में गोया डिवाइड करना चाहते हैं सो व्हाट वी विल डू इज टू डिवाइड द रेंज बाय द नंबर ऑफ क्लासेस दैट वी वांट इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द अप्रोक्सिमेट वैल्यू ऑफ द क्लास इंटरवल क्लास इंटरवल से मुराद है कि वो जो क्लासेस वो जो छोटे छोटे इंटरवल्स हमने फॉर्म करने हैं उनकी विड्थ क्या होगी the class interval is denoted by h, small h, and as I just said, it, when we divide the range by the number of classes that we want, we will get the class interval. So now, as you can see on the screen, we have h is equal to 14.8 divided by 5, and that is 2.96. But obviously, 2.96 is not a convenient number to work with, and hence we will be rounding it upward in order to obtain h equal to 3. Agla step ye hai ke hum ye decide kare ke uh, what is going to be the lower class limit of our first class. Yani ye to humne decide kar liya ke classes ki jo lambai hai that is going to be 3 units. Lekin where do we start from? Yani hum kaha se start kare ye kaam karna? The answer is that we should start from a value which is either equal to or slightly smaller than the smallest value in our data set. So as you can now see on the screen, this example mein hamari smallest value thi 30.1. So students, we can in this case start our first class from the number 30.0. Yani 30.1 se thoda piche a convenient round number se hum start kar lete hai, and that is 30.0. Ab jab humne ye number decide kar liya, yani ye dono baate decide kar li, ke uh, the lower class limit of our first class is going to be 30.0 and the class interval of each class is going to be 3, then the, it becomes very simple. Now all we have to do is to successively add the number 3 to the number 30.0. Yani, now as you can see on the screen, the lower limit of the first class is 30.0. Then 30.0 plus 3 gives us the lower limit of the second class as 33.0. The lower limit of the third one is 33.0 plus 3 and that is 36. Similarly, we have 39 and 42. Uh, lower limits to ab determine ho gain. Now we want to determine the upper limits. Ab yahan pe ek uh, isme point hai which is uh, very important. Lekin sometimes students do not um, pay so much attention to it. Is liye mein aapko ye tawajjo khas taur pe ab is agle point pe dilwana chahti hoon. Now as you can see on the screen, the upper limit of the first class has been written as 32.9. Apparently, it seems that the interval of the first class is 2.9. 32.9 minus 30 is 2.9. So it appears that the class interval of 3 has been changed. Now, this is exactly the point that I wanted to draw your attention to. Pehle aap is table ko puri tarah se study kar lije. Jab ye pehli value humne 32.9 rakh li, to uske baad baaki jo values hain upper class limit ki, wo bilkul usi tarah jis tarah se lower class limit ke liye kiya tha, ke aap successively 3 add karte jaiye, and you get all the upper class limits. Hence, you get the classes that you now see on the screen, 30.0 to 
33.0 to 35.9 and so on. So, now we see this point that we have seen 30 to 33, 33 to 36, 36 to 39, why did it not be written like this? The answer is that we have formed classes now. The problem will come to us when we tally the values of the data in these classes. If I have written 30 to 33, 33 to 36, and 33 to 36, and in my data set, a value of 33, so I don't understand that I will enter it in the first class or in the second class. You see, 30 to 33, 33 to 36. This means that the value of one value is 33. It can be used in the first class and in the second class. In the second class, it can be used in the second class. And in this way, we get the problem of duplication and confusion. This was exactly the reason why we take the upper class limits in a different way, as you just saw. When we write 30 to 32.9, 33 to 35.9, there is no problem. Agar mere data, where data ke andar, if the value is 33, I will put it in the second class. And if the value is 32.9, I will put it in the first class. Okay, so agar ye point clear ho gaya, to uske baad, now let's go to the next step. Of course, the next step is to distribute all our data values into these classes that we have formed. So, as you can now see on the screen, we construct another uh, column and that is the column of tally marks and then another column and that is the column for frequency. I will tell frequency ka matlab to thodi der ke baad bataungi. पहले टैली मार्क्स के ऊपर हम बात टैली मार्क्स के बारे में बात करते हैं। यू नो द टैली मार्क्स आर यूज्ड इन ऑर्डर टू हैव कन्वीनियंस इन सॉर्टिंग द डेटा एंड पुटिंग द डेटा इन द प्रॉपर इन इट्स प्रॉपर प्लेस। सो इन दिस एग्जांपल इफ आई गो बैक टू द ओरिजिनल डेटा दैट वी कलेक्टेड � the values in our data set were 36.3, 30.1 and so on. Is lihaz se, sab se pehli value 36.3 jo hai, is ko hum tally karenge third class mein, kyunke third class jo hai, that is going from 36.0 to 38.9. To saab zahir hai ke 36.3 jo hai, wo isi class mein fall karega. Next jo value hai 30.1, obviously that will fall in the first class which starts from 30.0 and goes up to 32.9. To is tarike se hum apne data set ki har value ko apni frequency table ke andar tally karte chale jayenge and we will get the resulting table as you now see on the screen. इस तरह से हमने सारा डेटा जो है उसको अपनी टेबल के अंदर टैली कर लिया। लेकिन आपके ज़हन में एक कंफ्यूजन है कि क्लास इंटरवल तो थ्री था और क्लास इंटरवल हमने टू पॉइंट नाइन कर दिया। मैं चाहूँगी कि आप अपनी इस टेबल को एक दफा फिर से गौर से देखें। If you look at the upper class limit, limit of the second class is thirty five point nine, and the upper limit of the first class is thirty two point nine, and if you subtract 32.9 from 35.9 students, you get exactly 3. Similarly, 38.9 minus 35.9 is exactly 3. And 41.9 minus 38.9 is also 3. This is what I want to indicate that class interval is now 3. But I know that there is a little bit of confusion. So, after a few minutes, जब हम क्लास बाउंड्रीज पे आएंगे तो इंशाल्लाह ताला आपकी ये कंफ्यूजन उस वक्त टोटली रिमूव हो जाएगी। नाउ लेट मी एक्सप्लेन टू यू द द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी। ये जो थर्ड कॉलम हमने बनाया इसका टाइटल हमने दिया फ्रीक्वेंसी। 
अब आप सोच रहे होंगे कि वो जो मैट्रिक में हम एग्जाम वो जो एक्सपेरिमेंट्स किया करते थे फिजिक्स में ट्यूनिंग फॉक हिलाते थे और उसकी फ्रीक्वेंसी डिटरमिन करते थे शायद इस तरह की कोई चीज़ है नहीं ऐसा तो बिल्कुल नहीं है जी इट सिंपली मीन्स हाउ फ्रीकुंटली समथिंग हैपन्स so as you see in the on the screen now uh, we had two tally marks for in the first class and hence the frequency of the first class is 2 yani iska mafhoom very simply sirf ye hai ke do values aisi hain jo ke pehli class ko belong kar rahi hain char values aisi hain jo ke second class ko belong kar rahi hain and so on and so forth students let us now consider uh, the the concept of class boundaries abhi jo pehle jitni baatein hui unme maine class limits ka zikr kiya tha basically ke lower limit of the first class is 30 and the upper limit is 32.9 and so on to class boundaries kya cheez hai dekhiye aapko yaad hoga ke sabse pehle lecture mein maine aapko एरर्स ऑफ मेजरमेंट का कॉन्सेप्ट दिया था यू विल रिकॉल दैट आई सेड दैट इफ अ वैल्यू इज रिकॉर्डेड एज थर्टी पॉइंट जीरो एक्चुअली इट लाइज समवेयर बिटवीन ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन फाइव एंड थर्टी पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सिमिलरली इफ द वैल्यू इज रिकॉर्डेड एज मेजर्ड एज थर्टी टू पॉइंट नाइन एक्चुअली इट लाइज समवेयर बिटवीन 32.85 and 32.95 if you recall all that discussion you will appreciate that we can utilize that concept in this situation and we can construct a column of class boundaries which will be actually the true limits of those classes so as you now see on the screen we construct another column and that is the column of class boundaries 30.0 ki jagah pe hum likhenge 29.95 aur 32.9 ki jagah pe hum likhenge 32.95 students ye humne kya step liya hai you know what we have done we have stretched the class to the left and to the right yani 30.0 to 32.9 jo hai usko humne stretch kar diya hai dono taraf in order to get the true boundaries the true limits of that class 32.9 is replaced by a value which is slightly larger and that is 32.95 and 30.0 has been stretched to a value which is slightly smaller and that is 29.95 now this process will of course continue for all the classes and in this in this way we will get all the class boundaries but i'm i'm i think uh, some of you might be a bit confused ke ye stretching to chale hui but how do we do it i mean what is the formula well the formula is very simple all you have to do as you now see on the screen is to add the upper limit of the first class with the lower limit of the second class and divide by 2 yani 32.9 plus 33.0 divided by 2 gives you 32.95 and we write this new number that we have just obtained as the upper boundary of the first class as well as the lower boundary of the second class bilkul isi tarah se hum throughout proceed karenge jo नेक्स्ट uh, दो वैल्यूज हैं जिनका एवरेज हमें लेना है दे आर 35.9 एंड 36.0 ये आप डायगनली इस तरह एक डायगनल तरीके से चलते जाएंगे और uh, दोनों वैल्यूज जिनको आपने ऐड करके टू से डिवाइड किया होगा यानी उनका एवरेज लिया होगा वो आप उन दोनों वैल्यूज को उस एवरेज वैल्यू से रिप्लेस कर देंगे और अब आप उस पहली बात पर भी वापिस आ जाइए वो आपको कंफ्यूजन थी ना कि वो जो क्लास है उसका इंटरवल तो 2.95 हो चुका है अब जरा स्क्रीन पे देखिए और नोट कीजिए कि जो आपकी पहली क्लास है द इंटरवल फ्रॉम द लोअर बाउंड्री टू द अपर बाउंड्री दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन 32.95 एंड 29.95 नाइन 
it is exactly equal to 3, exactly that which we wanted. Similarly, for the second class, the interval from 32.95 to 35.95 is exactly 3. And I hope that this sorts out that confusion. Which apparently lag raha tha ke humne class ki class ke interval ko tabdeel kar diya hai. In reality, we had not we had not done so. The true class limits of these classes are such that the interval is exactly what we wanted. Students, is tamam interesting discussion ke andar. एक और भी एक एक की पॉइंट है जिसको मैं आपको कन्वे करना चाहती हूँ इस यानी इनफैक्ट ये सारी डिस्कशन का एक किस्म की एक रिवीजन है एक इस बात की जो हमने अभी हम कर रहे हैं आप जो भी डेटा सेट हो हमेशा इसको इस तरह से आप प्रोसीड करें कि पहले इनिशियली आप जो क्लास लिमिट्स लें उनका नंबर ऑफ डेसिमल प उतना ही होना चाहिए जितना आपके डेटे का है। हमारे इस डेटे में, as you remember, all the values were up to one decimal place, and hence initially all my classes were constructed in such a way that the values were of one decimal. As you remember, 30.0 to 32.9, 33.0 to 35.9. अब ये नंबर जो हैं, it's obvious कि ये एक ही डेसिमल के हैं। उसके बाद जब आप क्लास लिमिट्स को क्लास बाउंड्रीज में कन्वर्ट करेंगे, तो ऑटोमैटिकली आपके जो नंबर्स हैं, वो अब दो डेसिमल पे हो जाएंगे, यानी एक डेसिमल बढ़ जाएगा। So as you saw, the class boundaries were 29.95 to 32.95, 32.95 to 35.95. अब ये दो डेसिमल हो गए, हालांकि हमारा जो ओरिजिनल डेटा है, वो सिर्फ एक डेसिमल का था। This creates a lot of convenience। अब कोई इम्कान नहीं है, कोई पॉसिबिलिटी नहीं है कि हम अपने डेटे की किसी भी वैल्यू को किसी गलत क्लास के अंदर एंटर कर दें। यानी सवाय इसके कि हम वैसे ही केयरलेसली काम कर रहे हों, otherwise there is no possibility of any confusion. मेरा डेटा एक डेसिमल पॉइंट वाला है, लेहाजा वो पहले जो क्लास लिमिट्स बनाई हैं, उसके तहत वो किसी एक क्लास में बड़ी आसानी के साथ टैली हो जाएगा। अगर वो नंबर मेरा नंबर 32.9 है, तो पहली क्लास में चला जाएगा। अगर 33.0 है, तो सेकंड क्लास में चला जाएगा। और बाद में जब हम बाउंड्रीज बना देंगे, तो व and 33.0, that gap is avoided. And we get a continuous uh, distribution, which this is exactly meant to be. After all, this is, this is the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Students, we have accomplished the construction of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. आप यकीन कीजिए कि एक इंतहाई बेसिक लेकिन एक इंतहाई इम्पोर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट है क्योंकि इसके बाद आप इस इससे बहुत ज़्यादा एडवांस जो चीजें सीखेंगे उनमें से बहुत सी चीजें इसी कॉन्सेप्ट के ऊपर बेस करती हैं सो आई वुड लाइक टू इनकरेज यू कि आप अपने जो टेक्सबुक है उसमें जो सॉल्व्ड � उनको आप जरूर अटेम्प्ट करें। The more you practice, the better off you will be. Let us now consider the concept of the relative frequency distribution and the percentage frequency distribution. You will recall that in the last lecture, when we were doing the frequency distribution of a discrete variable, we have already done these concepts. और आपको शायद याद हो कि they were very very simple concepts. All you have to do is to divide the frequency of any class by the total frequency and that gives you the relative frequency. Now, you can say that what is the relatives of the relatives? Aunties and uncles are one of the other? That is not the case. Obviously, relative frequency means the frequency of any class relative to the total number of observations that you have. 
یعنی اگر کل آبزرویشن تیس ہیں تو تیس میں سے کتنی ہیں جو کہ اس پرٹیکلر کلاس کو بلانگ کر رہی ہیں یعنی اس خالی اس نمبر کا علیدہ سے اتنا فائدہ نہیں ہے جب ہم اس کو دیکھتے ہیں ان کانٹیکسٹ ویر the total number of observations that we have, we get a better idea of the situation. Multiplying the relative frequency by 100 gives you the percentage frequency distribution. And as I said in the last lecture, percentages to layman ke liye particularly, percentages ko understand karna to sab se zyada asaan hota hai. So as you can now see on the screen, the Percentage frequency distribution for this example is 6.7% of the values belong to the first class, 13.3% belong to the second class, 46.7% belong to the third class, and so on and so forth. Of course, the, when you add up all these percentages, you get a total of 100. Students, ریلیٹیو فریکنسی ڈسٹریبیوشن بنانے کا ایک بہت بڑا فائدہ یہ بھی ہے کہ آپ کمپیرزن کر سکتے ہیں بیٹوین ٹو فریکنسی ڈسٹریبیوشن ہیونگ سملر کلاسز لیٹ می ایکسپلین دس پوائنٹ ود دی ہیلپ آف این ایگزامپل لیٹ اس گو بیک ٹو دیٹ سیم ایگزامپل آف دی انوائرمنٹل پروٹیکشن ایجنسی اینڈ لیٹ اس سپوز دیٹ دے ہیو کنڈکٹیڈ دس پرٹیکولر ٹیسٹ ناٹ اون جسٹ ون پرٹیکولر کار ماڈل بٹ آن two different car models, A and B, as you now see on the screen. The frequency distribution for the model B is 7, 10, 16, 9 and 8. And the total number of cars for that model is 50. Whereas the distribution for the first model is exactly the same as what, as what we were discussing earlier. Now, in order to compare the situation of the two car models, it's very simple if we do the relative frequency distribution or the percentage frequency distribution. So, as you now see on the screen, we have 6.7% of the cars of Model A have mileage 30 to 32.9. But if you Model B, then 14% of the cars of this model have this, this particular mileage. So, what does this mean? اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ ماڈل اے سیمس ٹو بی بیٹر دین ماڈل بی اس لیے کہ یہ مائلیج تو بہت کم مائلیج ہے دس از ناٹ اے ویری گڈ مائلیج اور ماڈل بی جو ہے اس کی چودہ فیصد کاریں ایسی ہیں وچ از مور دین ڈبل آف دا پرسینٹیج دیٹ وی ہیو فار ماڈل اے ایسی جن کا مائلیج اتنا کم ہے اسی طرح اگر آپ اب اگر آپ سیکنڈ کلاس کو دیکھیں تو ماڈل اے میں 13.3 پرسینٹ آر فالنگ ان دیٹ مائلیج رینج بٹ فار ماڈل بی 20 پرسینٹ وچ از اگین سبسٹینشلی ہائر دین 13 پرسینٹ 20 پرسینٹ از فالنگ ان دیٹ رینج کمنگ ٹو اے بیٹر مائلیج وچ از 36 ٹو 38.9 وی سی دیٹ آلموسٹ 47 پرسینٹ کارز آف ماڈل اے آر ہیونگ دس مچ مائلیج But only 32% of the cars of Model B have this, this particular mileage. So, my opinion is, students, you have understood my point that in this way, we can step by step compare it. And if we have more experience in this way, then at a glance, uh, almost at a glance, we are able to have a proper comparison between the two sets of data. Let us consolidate all these ideas with the help of another example. The following table contains the ages of 50 managers of childcare centers in five cities of a developed country. As you can see, the ages are 42, 26, 32 and so on. Convert this data into a frequency distribution. Now students, in this connection, the first point to be noted is that just as we had in the last example, the data in this example, the data of the ages of the managers is a 
pile of numbers and we would like to convert it into a compact and comprehensible frequency table. So, in order to construct this table, of course, the first step is to find the range of the data set, just as we did in the last example. As you can see, the smallest value in this data set is 23 and the largest value is 74. Therefore, the range is equal to 74 minus 23 equal to 51. The second step in constructing the frequency distribution is to determine how many classes we would like to have and the rule of thumb is to select something between 5 and 15 classes. In this example, suppose that we would like to have 6 classes. The next step is to determine the width of the class interval and an approximation of the class width can be calculated by dividing the range by the number of classes. So, dividing 51 by 6, we obtain 8.5 and if we round it, it is equal to 9. But students, the point to note is that generally, rather than having a number like 9 or 7 or 8, we would like to have a rounded number like 10. You know, 10 year age intervals are easily recognized and understood by common people rather than um, a 9 year interval. So, the next step is the determination of the lower and upper limits of the various classes and we must keep in mind that the frequency distribution must begin at a value which is equal to or less than the lowest number in our raw data set and also it should end at a value which is equal to or greater than the highest number in our data set. In this example, the youngest age is 23 and the oldest is 74. So, students, we can start our frequency distribution from the number 20. Ho sakta hai ki aapki zehen mein baat aai ki 20 se kyun start kar rahe hain? Why not starting from 23 itself or from 22? To iska jawab yahi hai ke just as in the case of the class interval, we would like to have a, a convenient number. Similarly, for class limits as well, we would like to have a rounded number like 20 or in some other case, it might be 15. Yani ek number jo 5 pe end ho raha ho ya 0 pe end ho raha ho, that would be regarded perhaps as a bit more convenient than per perhaps 23. All right, now that we are clear that the class interval is 10 and the lower limit of the lowest class is 20 students, then we can very conveniently construct the classes as 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and so on. The next step is to construct the column of frequencies and applying the tally method, we obtain, as you now see on the screen, the frequencies of the various classes as 6, 18, 11, 11, 3 and 1. Of course, the sum of the frequencies is 50, exactly the number of managers that we had in our data set. So, this is how we have consolidated a pile of 50 numbers into a compact and comprehensible tabular form. Okay, 
آج ہم نے ایک جیسا میں نے پہلے کہا ایک انتہائی بیسک لیکن ایک انتہائی امپورٹنٹ کانسیپٹ ڈسکس کیا اینڈ دیٹ از دا فریکوینسی ڈسٹریبیوشن آف اے کنٹینیوس ویریبل لیٹ اس ناؤ ٹرن آور اٹینشن ٹو دا ویژول ریپرزینٹیشن آف دس ڈسٹریبیوشن ایز آئی سیڈ ان دا بگننگ آف ٹوڈیز لیکچر آئی ول ڈسکس ان دس ریگارڈ دا ہسٹوگرام دا فریکوینسی پالیگون and the frequency curve. سب سے پہلے ہسٹوگرام کی بات کرتے ہیں ہسٹوگرام کا جیسے آپ سوچ رہے ہوں گے کہ نام ہی بڑا انٹرسٹنگ سا ہے ہسٹوگرام اور نام کے علاوہ یہ ویسے بھی بڑا انٹرسٹنگ سا ڈائیگرام ہے اس کی فارمل ڈیفینیشن اب آپ اسکرین پہ دیکھ رہے ہیں اے ہسٹوگرام کنسسٹ آف اے سیٹ آف اجیسنٹ ریکٹینگلس whose bases are marked off by class boundaries along the x-axis and whose heights are proportional to the frequencies associated with the respective classes. Now you will think that this is a very complicated definition, but it is not like this. It is actually very simple. Students, the first step is to mark off the class boundaries along the x-axis. and construct a scale for the frequencies along the y-axis, as you now see on the screen. I will be considering the cars of model A that we were considering in the first instance. As you remember, the lowest class boundary was 29.95. Then we had 32.95, 35.95, and so on. until we covered the largest value in our data set. Now, as you can see, we have marked the x-axis off. As far as the y-axis is concerned, as I said a short while ago, we should construct a scale in order to represent our frequencies. As you remember, the highest frequency was 14. And as such, we have constructed a scale so that we can cover the height equal to 14. Now, we have to draw rectangles with the bases along the x-axis and heights according to our frequencies for the various classes that we have. So, as you now see on the screen. Isi tarah, for the second class, 32.95 to 35.95, you will recall that the number of cars falling in that class was four. And so we draw a rectangle of height equal to four units adjacent to the first rectangle. The class uh, from 35.95 to 38.95 contained 14 observations. And so the height of the third uh, rectangle is much taller than the first two. And uh, we have this uh, very interesting diagram coming up. Proceeding in the same manner, we obtain the histogram that you now see on the screen. As I said earlier, this kind of a diagram is called the histogram. And it gives you the, an indication of the overall pattern of your frequency distribution. The second graph that I will discuss with you is called the frequency polygon. A frequency polygon is obtained by plotting the class frequencies against the midpoints of the classes and connecting the points so obtained by straight line segments. Ab isme jo important baat aapne note ki hogi wo ye hai ke abhi abhi jo humne isse pehle banaya tha اس میں ہم نے ایکس ایکسس کے اگینسٹ کلاس باؤنڈریز کو پلاٹ کیا تھا لیکن اب ہمیں مڈ پوائنٹس جو ہیں ان کو لینا ہے الانگ دی ایکس ایکسس مڈ پوائنٹس کس طرح اپٹین کیے جائیں گے ایکسٹریملی سمپل آل یو ہیو ٹو ڈو اس ٹو ایڈ دی لوور باؤنڈری آف اینی کلاس ود دا اپر باؤنڈری آف دیٹ کلاس اینڈ ڈیوائڈ بائی ٹو اینڈ دیٹ گیوز یو دا مڈ پوائنٹ سو As you now see, we have the midpoints for this example as 31.45, 
37.45, 40.45 and 43.45. As you must have uh, realized, it is simply the average for, of the lower boundary and the upper boundary of any class. Now plotting these along the x-axis and constructing a scale for the frequencies along the y-axis, as you now see on the screen, we are ready to uh, draw our graph, which is called the frequency polygon. Achha, ab isme ek baat ap note kijiye ke hamari jo hamara jo pehla midpoint tha, that was 31.45, aur jo hamara last midpoint tha, that was 43.45. Lekin x-axis par maine jo values li hain, usme ap note kar rahe hain ke 31.45 se pehle मैंने एक और वैल्यू ली है उतने ही इंटरवल पे जितना के बाकी वैल्यूज का इंटरवल है यानी के वही इंटरवल h is equal to 3 और ऐसा करने की वजह से जो मेरी पहली वैल्यू x एक्सिस के ऊपर आ रही है that is 28.45 इसी तरह मैंने ग्राफ के राइट right साइड पर मेरा जो लास्ट मिड पॉइंट था 43.45 उससे आगे एक और वैल्यू ली है and that is 46.45. ये मैंने क्यों किया? इसकी वजह ये है कि I want my frequency polygon to be a closed figure. As you will recall from your um, school days, geometry में polygon एक many-sided closed figure को कहते हैं. तो ये जो एक class मैंने शुरू में और आखिर में बढ़ाई है, इनके अगेंस्ट मैं फ्रीक्वेंसीज लिखूंगी जीरो इसलिए कि जो मेरा डेटा है उसमें तो कोई ऐसी कार नहीं थी जो उस पहली क्लास या उस आखरी क्लास में फॉल करती जो मैंने खुद से बढ़ाई हैं सो इट इज अप्रोप्रिएट टू राइट फ्रीक्वेंसी इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर दिस फर्स्ट क्लास एंड दिस लास्ट क्लास दैट आई हैव एडेड ऐसा करने से फायदा ये हुआ कि मेरा डेटा भी डिस्टर्ब नहीं हुआ, कोई डिस्टॉर्शन नहीं है, और जीरो फ्रीक्वेंसी की वजह से मेरा जो ग्राफ है, that will be a closed figure, as I will just now explain. All you have to do is to plot the frequencies that you have against the x values, which are the midpoints. So, as you now see on the screen, our midpoints are 28.45, 31.45 and so on and the frequencies are 0, 2, 4 and so on. So plotting these points and joining them by straight line segments, we get the graph that is called the frequency polygon. Now I will stress that this class we have formed in the beginning with zero frequency और जो आखिर में फॉर्म की विद जीरो फ्रीक्वेंसी उस उन्हीं की वजह से हमारा ये जो ग्राफ है इट हैज इट लुक्स लाइक अ क्लोज फिगर अगर हम ये दो क्लासेस फॉर्म ना करते देन ऑफ कोर्स आवर ग्राफ वुड हैव लुक्ड एज व्हाट यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन नाउ एक्चुअली द पॉइंट इज दैट फ्रॉम द स्टैटिस्टिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इट रियली डज नॉट मैटर बट इफ यू कंसीडर द वेरी basic mathematical definition of a polygon, this graph which is not touching the x-axis from either side, you know, isko phir aap polygon nahi kai sakte because it is not a closed figure. So this is exactly the reason why we do what we just did. The next concept is that of the frequency curve. The frequency curve is also a very important concept and a very easy concept. All you have to do is to smooth your frequency polygon by the freehand method. So, as you now see on the screen, the dotted line represents the frequency curve, whereas, of course, the continuous straight line segments represent the frequency polygon. Isme jo baat ahem hai, wo ye hai ke is frequency curve ka ye matlab nahi hai कि हमारी ये जो स्मूथ कर्व है, it must touch all the plotted points. कई दफा स्टूडेंट्स इस बात में कंफ्यूज होते हैं, और मैं स्ट्रेस करना चाहती हूँ कि आप इस बात को जहन में रखिए 
okay, this is a smoothing by the freehand method in order to indicate the overall pattern of your frequency distribution. It is not necessary that your curve must pass through all the points that you plotted. Let us consolidate all these ideas by considering the frequency distribution of the ages of the managers of child care centers. The class intervals were 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49 and so on and the frequencies were 6, 18, 11 and so on. Now in order to construct the histogram, the first step is to form the column of class boundaries and as explained earlier, the class boundaries are obtained by adding the upper limit of any class to the lower limit of the next class and dividing by 2. For example, when we add 29 to 30 and divide by 2, we obtain 29.5 or students note ki jiye ke 29 ki jaga pe bhi hum 29.5 likhenge or 30 ki jaga pe bhi 29.5. Similarly, we can find the average of 39 and 40 to obtain 39.5, the average of 49 and 50 to obtain 49.5 and so on. Now in order to construct the histogram, we will take the class boundaries along the x axis and the frequencies along the y axis. The histogram is a set of adjacent rectangles and the heights of the rectangles will be according to the frequencies. The first frequency is 6 and so the first rectangle has a height of 6 units. The second frequency is 18 and therefore the second rectangle is much taller than the first one as you can see on the slide. Similarly, the third frequency is 11 and we have the third rectangle with height equal to 11 units. Proceeding in this manner, students, we obtain the histogram that you now have on the screen. Next, we consider the construction of the frequency polygon. As you will remember, for this purpose, we first need to find the midpoints of all the classes, which in this example are 24.5, 34.5, 44.5 and so on. Of course, they are obtained very easily by adding the lower class boundary of any class to the upper class boundary of the same class and dividing by 2. Now, since we want the polygon to touch the x-axis on the left side as well as the right hand side, therefore, we add a class in the beginning and in the end of our table and these classes are 9.5 to 19.5 and 79.5 to 89.5. Ab chunke hamare data set ki koi value in age groups may fall nahi kar rahi. therefore the frequencies of these classes are 0. The midpoint of the first class that I just added is 14.5 and that of the other one is 84.5. Now taking all the midpoints along the x axis and the frequencies along the y axis, we are ready to construct our frequency polygon and by plotting the frequencies against the midpoints and joining the points so obtained by straight line segments, students, we obtain the frequency polygon that you now see on the screen. Last but not the least, we would also like to 
draw the frequency curve of this particular data set and as you now see on the screen when we smooth the frequency polygon by a freehand curve we obtain a moderately positively skewed frequency curve. So we see that the visual representation of the frequency distribution gives us a fairly good idea about the main properties of our data set. Next time we will take this discussion further and I will discuss with you the various types of frequency curves that we encounter in practice. Also we will go to the concept of the cumulative frequency distribution and the cumulative frequency polygon. In the meantime, as I said earlier, I would like you to practice with all that you have learned today and also to attempt the assignment that you will find on the website. Best of luck and Allah Hafiz.